In this video, we're going to be tackling the problem of the entire sprinkler system looks weak. And one of the first things that we really need to understand here is if that's actually true. Does the entire system look equally weak? We're going to look at every single zone and try to determine if this is one thing that's affecting all of the zones, or maybe the zones look slightly different. One's running, one's strong, one's kind of weak. That may indicate separate valve problems, but if we determine that all of the valves, all of the zones look equally weak, then this is the problem and how we're going to troubleshoot it. Now, of course, our first step is always just to ask questions of our client, ask very directed, specific questions. Has there been any type of work done on your property, any cable lines, phone lines, fiber optic, any landscape lighting put in, whatever, and try to ask directed questions because they may not think that something relates to your problem, but when you start asking about a bunch of different things, it may set off a light bulb and give you some information that you need, right? So as we go through the troubleshooting steps, if you watch any of my other videos, you know that our troubleshooting methodology works from the easiest things to check to the most complicated and time consuming. And so in this instance, really what we're looking for is a mechanical problem. Chances are it's not going to be an electrical problem, but we're always going to do an electrical troubleshoot of our timer first. Only takes a couple of minutes. And that's just part of our methodology, right? It's super easy just carrying a multimeter to the garage or wherever the timer is on the side of the building, and we're going to walk through it. I've got a separate video just for this particular task, so check that out and just walk through the steps of troubleshooting the timer. And now we're going to take the bottom cover off of our timer and look to see if there's a wire screwed into the terminal marked P or M. That stands for pump or master valve. And what that is is a way for the timer to turn on an external device at the same time it's turning on the irrigation system and opening up valves. A master valve is just a, a zone valve, the same kind of valve that's at the very beginning of the irrigation system. And it really protects against small leaks across the entire system. And it doesn't allow pressurized water into the system until it turns zone number one on. And then when it gets to the end of the cycle, zone six or whatever, then it shuts off that valve and the master valve at the same time. So it's like a control valve for the entire system. So we're looking for the wire there in that it may also indicate that you have a pump that goes, that wire would go out to a pump start relay. And since really what we're looking for here is a central cause for this weak pressure or low pressure. And if you have a pump, a booster pump, lake pump, that's a separate topic, more involved than what we want to get into in this video, but it's actually the first place that you should look. And so hopefully on the pump, there's a pressure gauge installed on the pressure side, the output side of it, so that you can just see if it's got a good operation. And really a, a competent pump installation should have a pressure gauge on the pressure side, the output side, and a suction gauge on the intake side, just so that you can quickly look at it and see if it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. So we're going to disregard pumps. Like I said, it's an advanced topic. So let's move into a, a situation, a system that's being supplied by city water. So what we're going to do here is uh, turn the zone on, turn any zone on, but it really what you should do is turn on a zone that while you're working in the front yard or wherever, the supply valves are, the meter and so forth, you need to be able to see the zone that's running while you're doing these checks, right? So turn on a, a zone on the side of the house or whatever that you can see, make a walk around the entire property. I mean the entire property because it's not uncommon for us to install an extra hose bib or faucet or hydrant attached to the irrigation main just for convenience purposes, maybe out by the garage or by your driveway so you can hook up a, a hose and wash your car. And it may be possible that one of those are, are open or broken. So turn zone one on or any zone, whatever, and walk around the entire property and be watching and listening for a problem. You may hear some rushing water, gurgling water, or whatever. So we're really looking for something central happening that's affecting the entire system. And that should be on the main line or the control valve. So as we walk around, we're going to identify where the meter and backflow preventer and all that stuff is. 
and we're going to go there and check our control valves that's on our main line and that should consist of a meter or curb stop next up should be the backflow preventer and then if you have a master valve it should be after that or the pressure reducing valve sometimes they get swapped in order there i'm not sure it really matters but um, what we're really looking for is any of these type of valves that's present and if you you have a backflow preventer that's mounted underground in a valve pit it may be that you have the master valve or pressure reducing valve in a smaller maybe a round valve box around valve tube and sometimes you even have to probe around i always in this situation would carry a screwdriver with me and if i don't see a box and if i knew there was a master valve on the system i'd start probing around behind the backflow preventer to see if i hear the thump of the screwdriver hitting a maybe a buried box right there it's pretty common for especially with warm season grasses to grow over those round boxes so that's what we're going to try to do to determine how many of those control valves that we have in play now we're going to go to our meter and our backflow preventer and see if all of the valves are all the way open. If you have a meter key, take it to the meter or curb stop. Make sure it's fully open. Go to your backflow preventer and check both of the shutoff valves. Most of the backflow preventer types have a valve on each side, a shutoff valve for testing. And either one of those can shut the system off, but they're, like I said, they're both there for testing. And if somebody has recently been there to do a backflow test, they may not have opened both of the valves all the way up. So put your hands on it. Of course, being careful for spiders down in the box if it's a below ground mount. Check, make sure that both of these are open. And if for some reason that one of the handles has rusted off, a lot of times they'll just disintegrate, especially if water accumulates and stands in the box. We'll go get you a replacement handle for that you should really if you're a technician you should carry there's two sizes a three quarter and a one inch for most of your backflow preventer sizes always carry a spare one or two of those on you because it's very common for these handles to rust off and you can't really tell by looking at it if the the valve is open or not so i go get one put it on that little nub and just make sure that valve is all the way open you'd be surprised at how many times these valves are left partially closed Right, so we're going to determine that there's no valves that are open, especially if there's, you know, on the backflow preventer, a gate valve or maybe an isolation valve that's a gate valve. Put your hands on it. Make sure that thing is all the way open. Pretty common for those not to be all the way open for some reason. Maybe it's vibration. I'm not sure. Maybe it's, you know, just forgetfulness on the part of a previous technician that's been there. But we want to check to make sure that everything's open. And now we're going to be looking at the master valve. If we saw a wire in the master valve terminal, we know there's one on the system. It's usually installed at the beginning of the system. I mean, that's the best practice for it. But sometimes you'll find a master valve near the cluster of valves or right in front of it. If there's a, um, <clears throat> a manifold or just a box full of valves or a series of valves, sometimes as a retrofit, a technician will come in and put the master valve right in front of them just so that they don't have to run the wires all the way out to the beginning of the system where you really should have put the master valve to begin with but we just want to know where it's at so we can address it so first thing is we're going to see does it have a flow control knob on the top and if so see if it's all the way open and if it you do have some give, some turn on it, well, be looking at your zone that's still running, right? We, we had turned this on uh, by the timer and put 20 or 30 minutes on it so we could do all of our checks and still be able to watch this zone while it runs. So if, if you open up the flow control and the master valve and all of a sudden that zone comes up to pressure, well, then go back to your timer and check the rest of your zones to see if that solved the problem. So while we're there at the master valve, we want to check if that doesn't do it, if there's a bleed screw, on it and not every valve has a flow control but we want to open up the bleed screw if not and see if that affects the zone that's running and if not we'll close it back and if it doesn't have a bleed screw well let's open up the solenoid because you can manually actuate a valve a solenoid valve by unscrewing your solenoid now don't take it all the way off and be careful be slow about it because it's only got like three loops of the threads there and if you take it all the way off Sometimes the little pressure, there's a little tiny hole inside of there that if the, the pressure's on, 
it could push enough water through it to where you can't get that solenoid to seep back down and you can cross thread those plastic threads. So that's my caveat on that. Just slowly undo it. I've got in my other videos, I really don't recommend you manually turning on a valve by the solenoid if you have another choice, right? Because there's a little O-ring on there. But um, so we're going to check. And if the, the, the master valve is determined not to be the problem, then we move on. I mean, if it's a problem, just rebuild or replace. But now, do we have a pressure reducing valve in play? Now, these are harder to check unless you have a hose bib or a hydrant or something that's downstream of this device on the main line that you can put a pressure gauge on and just check what the pressure is. But in the absence of that, what we're going to have to do is just open it up fully and see if that affects the situation, right? And on these pressure reducing valves, everyone I've ever dealt with, maybe there's some out there that are different, but the adjustment of it is kind of backwards. It's not righty tighty, lefty loosey. And whereas righty tighty, you would think that that would shut it down and close down the pressure, but actually a clockwise righty movement um, actually opens it up. So it's just backwards. So open this pressure reducing valve all the way open, see if it affects the valve that we're watching or the, the zone that we're keeping our eye on here. And if not, it may still be uh, defective, right? Th these things, when they fail, they can either fail closed or open. In fact, uh, I had to replace one on my own house here recently, a pressure reducing valve that had failed, but it failed open. And now we're having like 100 plus PSI coming into the house and causing water hammer and so forth. So if we can't determine one way or another if this is the problem, it may have to be the very last thing that we circle back around to and then just replace it. If we can't find anything else that's a problem, then you may want to tap in a faucet after it or something if it's too difficult to just replace on its own. You might want to put a faucet after it and put a gauge on it just to see if we can measure that there's a pressure loss is there. Okay, so we've looked at, you know, all of our shutoff valves are open. The master valve is not the problem. Pre pressure reducing valve is not the problem. Well, go to your truck and get a pressure gauge out and uh, one with a like I think it's a 3 8 inch thread on it that fits into the test cocks on the backflow preventer. We're going to get our pressure gauge and then go to the backflow preventer and unless it's a residential dual check which has no testable and no it's not testable it's not repairable it's just you have to replace it or just replace the guts on it but if we have a, a double check valve assembly or a reduced pressure principle assembly, these have four test cocks on them. And there's other kinds that just have two test cocks, but you can tell across the device if there's a problem. So what we're going to do is going to put our gauge on test cock number one. This is the test cock that's closest to the meter. And this should give us a good clean reading of what our input pressure is. And if you put your gauge on there and it reads lower than what you were expecting, then it's a problem with the meter, the water meter or the curb stop or whatever your supply point is. And that's usually not the purview of the technician that belongs to the water system. So you're going to have to call them your water purveyor or whatever you call it and have them come out and address the meter. But if on test cock number one, you know, it's got a little place to put your screwdriver on there and open that test cock up. We're going to check the pressure and then we're going to move the gauge to test cock number four, the last one, the furthest away from the meter, put our gauge on there and then check the drop across the device. Now, most of these devices say that you can have up to a seven or 10% drop across the device and it not be defective. But if you see a huge one, say you've got 80 PSI as your input pressure on test cock one and then 30 on your exit pressure on test cock four, well, you know it's a problem with the backflow preventer, rebuild or replace. Most of these can be rebuilt and you can take the guts of them out and put new check valves down in there or whatever, or it just may be something lodged up into the body of it itself and you have to replace the whole deal. So we've determined that it's none of these control valves that's given us the problem. Almost likely, I mean, 80% of the time, it's either a master valve or pressure reducing valve or the backflow preventer is partially closed or something like that. But we're going to have to continue on if we haven't solved the problem yet. So now we're left with two things to check. Number one is the valves, the zone valves themselves. And, you know, we try to determine at, at first a uh, glance of the situation if 
truly all of the, the zones, all of the valves were acting the same. Well, if they all look like they're acting the same, chances are it's not the valves. The, the odds of them all being equally bad that way all at once are pretty low. But if it's an old, old system or it's been sitting for a long period of time, maybe they all have some biofilm and some junk inside of them that are causing them some problems. Rarely that's the case. But now we're left with a couple of very difficult things to check. So you might want to rebuild one of those zone valves and see if that affects the pressure on that. But in the absence of all of this, the only thing left is a problem with your main supply line, your irrigation main that goes from the supply out to the zone valves. Either this line is crimped or crushed or clogged up. So we're going to have to try to determine that. And as on the front end of the appointment, you know, we asked our homeowner, our client or whatever, if anything had happened, cable construction or landscape lighting, anything like that. The problem with cable construction, meaning dropping phone lines or cable TV lines or fiber optic into the ground, generally they use a vibratory plow like this one we're seeing here. And what it is is a blade that they drop down into the ground and they attach the wire to it and it pulls it underground. And this blade is vibrating as they pull it through. And most of the time it'll just cut right through a pipe and you'll see a little bit of water come up there if there's some water in the pipe or whatever. But sometimes when this vibratory plow hits a pipe or a bundle of pipes, it'll crimp them, it'll pinch them as it's pulling. This thing is pretty strong, but sometimes it'll get hung up and they'll, you know, they can tell that it's, it's hung up. So they'll pick the blade up and then move it and drop it back down just thinking, well, that's the root or some, a, a root that we've got a hold of there. And so they just want to keep going and it'll just pull the, the wire up and over it. So if it's done that and it's crimped that pipe, that's going to be very hard to determine. And so hopefully you still see the seam because when they're done with this, sometimes they'll walk behind it and just kind of stomp it down. But all you'll see is a little seam in the ground and you can barely tell that it's been done. But you need to determine where that main line pipe is and then dig up there. Now that may be harder to do, and if you're not familiar with dowsing rods, this is a very um, valuable tool for irrigation technicians to find the pipes in the ground pretty quickly. I've got a separate video on that. Please don't get in the, the comments and tell me it don't work or it's unscientific. I use it all the time. I, I just... I just found a, a dude and they drilled a well and it was perfect. So, I mean, this works and this should be a tool in your tool bag to use because you need to figure out where that pipe is. So um, if we see a seam or we see some damage from some other work that's been done, we try to figure out where the pipe is and then dig it up. I mean, at this point, you're probably getting pretty desperate to figure out what the problem is. So it's, you know, you've got the shovel in hand and this is basically the last thing. And if you can't find anything here, you're going to have to go back to the pressure reducing valve and replace it. Or like I said before, tap in a hose bib after it, just so that you can put a gauge on it and check to see. But at this point, we've covered all of the factors that could possibly affect the system.